G'day YouTube, I just wanted to have a whinge about how difficult this Thyrotron Tesla coil is becoming. Um, as you know I've already blown up one pulse rotor capacitor and tonight I've just blew up my ENG um, Thyrotron modulator which cost me 200 bucks. So I'm not very happy about that, it's my fault, I should have put more, in, uh, more protection in but I didn't really expect that there'd be so much voltage across the grid of this friggin Thyrotron and the cathode and I thought considering it was um, designed to run 4 inch Thyrotrons which usually run at about 20,000 volts that it would be able to stand up to it but obviously Tesla core service is a little bit too difficult for it um, what I did do is when I got these capacitors today um, I decided I'd hook them up on all, all in series to reduce the workload on them on each individual one and to increase the voltage across them so there's 4 times 6,000 volts there so 24,000 volts, these are rated for. That goes through a single loop of wire through a toroid, a very large toroid. That's to reduce the inrush current. I experimented with one, with half, and with two windings, and this is the best result. That goes into these capacitors, 4,700 UF. They're rated for 6,000 volts each, so 18,000 volts in total. Um, they're 90 kilobar caps, so they're um, rated for 90,000 volt amps reactive, I think. So they've got they handle a bit of power. But anyway, um, so that all connects up to the Thyrotron. Um, the problem is that this Thyrotron was um, having a grid arcing. I corrected it before by putting a, um, a bypass diode um, to uh, neg negatively bias the grid, but it didn't work this time. I think it's because I was starting to get towards resonance of this um, this circuit because this is now a tuned circuit that I've tested in a vacuum tube Tesla coil um, and got about 30 centimeter arcs out of it. So now that this is tuned I think it's uh, a little bit more demanding on the system. So after that blew up I spent about an hour getting this guy which is my blocking oscillator taken out of uh, pulse generators. It uh, doesn't have a pulse forming network on the uh, grid side but it gives narrow enough pulses. Um, it's made from two micro or well, the, the transformers made from two micro oven transformers that have had the inside windings taken out to add extra insulation to them. You've got three primaries there. Um, you've got your, this is your power in, then you've got your tickler or your feedback and then I've got a secondary um, which is where I take my voltage output from to trigger the Thyrotron. Now this is where it all got a bit nasty. What was happening is I was getting so much over voltage on that grid that it was uh, busting through the insulation on here. I mean it's not that fantastic but it eventually arced out from there to there and all of the energy from this capacitor bank um, went through this and I got a continuous arc and it's, uh, it's burnt out my winding there so that's made me give up for the night but yeah it seems like this circuit that I've made doesn't work um, I'm either going to have to get good at making semiconductor circuits and PCB boards or figure out a way to get a good micro and nanosecond pulse out of this that isn't an AC but uh, a DC pulse which I don't know how I'm going to do but I didn't know how I was going to do any of this when I started and I've managed to get some pretty good results so far but yeah the um, Thyrotron modulator shitting itself was just a, just uh, the straw that broke the camel's back at this moment I think I'll put it down for a bit until I can figure out a way of getting or overcoming the problems that I'm seeing so far especially with the voltage rise on this uh, on this primary is ridiculous. I haven't seen it before um, in Tesla cores. Sometimes you'll get a build up of corona between the, the primary and the secondary all through here. The whole air is charged with ozone. Any any wire um, that's anywhere near anything, even a bit of wood like that, will start to get a good glow around it. Um, I had actually arcing before from the primary circuit from here down to that earth wire which is about an inch and a half now I'm only running in 8000 volts so 
it's doubling or tripling or quadrupling the amount of voltage that I'm putting in. I've no way to measure that, but I know that it's ridiculous. It's getting up to about 50 kilovolt. So these um, not not continuous, but impulses. I don't know how these capacitors have stood up, or whether even they have stood up. I might have fried them as well. But at least I didn't fry my pulse caps, and that's what's important. Anyway, that's all I wanted to mention about this. Hopefully, other people will start building them. Um, people with more experience than me, and people who have got experience with spark gap to the cores, because I'm pretty sure you'd run into the same problems. But it's pretty hard to damage a, a mechanical switch. And this kind of stuff's uh, pretty susceptible to over voltage and transients. Um, I think I've blown up everything silicon that I've tried so far. The only thing that's surviving is the bully vacuum tubes and the gas tubes, of course. Anyway, have a good night. I'll catch you later.